Hello everyone, thanks for joining me today. Um, my name is Rick Trisco. I'm a student here at UW Waukesha as part of the BAS program. And my, um, I'm doing sustainability management as my concentration. And this is my capstone project presentation. In the United States, building our, buildings are the leader for energy consumption. Commercial and residential buildings account for 41% in the United States and 70% of the total energy consumed worldwide. Most buildings are not efficient and are wasting energy, which will make it difficult to reach our nation's long-term sustainability goal. The aging infrastructure and building stock around the United States leads to inefficiencies that contribute to our collective national energy and carbon footprint. The United States is spending $500 billion per year in energy costs and is responsible for 8% of the global carbon emissions. There are approximately 5 million commercial and industrial buildings in the U.S and 85% of those will still be around by the, by the year 2030. There are many ways to cut down consumption, such as turning off the lights, turning down the temperature in your house during the day, and turning off uh, your computer when it's not being used. But is changing your routine enough to, to help where we need it? Or is adding high we're adding replacement high efficiency items like a new furnace, lights, and structural improvements going to take it to the next step and really cut back energy use. In order to provide clean air to future generations, we must make a change and lower our carbon emissions drastically. It is important we do our part to help lower the emissions, and it's also something that needs to be done globally. Many countries around the world have already started programs to lower their emissions. Here in Wisconsin, coal burning power plants are the main source of energy for buildings, with around 56% of the energy coming from them. And even though coal is abundant and cheap, it puts a lot of carbon emissions into the air, much more than virtually most other power plants, and solar panels and wind turbines virtually put no emissions into the air. Um, another thing about Wisconsin is a lot of the coal burning plants are adjacent to waterways. So not all the coal gets burnt efficiently, and particles fall into the water after burning, and as well as blowing dust from ash piles and coal stockpiles. This carbon that is sent into the air is causing global climate change. And some would say they like the weather when it's 65 in the middle of November here in Wisconsin. But this global climate change has the potential to have many negative effects such as rising sea levels and rising temperatures in the sea, which leads to coastal flooding and drought. This in turn affects not only humans, but many ecosystems around the earth. This could potentially lead to loss of habitat and species found within these delicate ecosystems. And these ecosystems are, humans are highly dependent upon them for clean air and clean water. We've all seen what happens during storms when the coasts flood. So imagine if this was to happen all at the same time with the rising sea level. So it is important that we lower our emissions. And we have to make owners of buildings see the benefits and know how much their upgrades would help to lower the carbon emissions. This is not only important globally, but it also makes fiscal sense. Some of the benefits besides lowering carbon emissions include more desirable lease space for someone who rents, lowering energy costs, and greater control of equipment. The upgraded equipment would be installed as far more control and settings available to be programmed for energy needs versus running all the time. There are many benefits to lowering the energy use, such as lowering the carbon, but there are also barriers preventing building owners from completing these needed upgrades. Some concerns amongst building owners are the upfront costs for the upgrades, replacing something that is working fine, and just not wanting to deal with the process involved to have their structures upgraded. Also, some owners do not want to replace things in rental properties that they simply do not pay the cost of the bills for. So, what can we do to help lower emissions and in turn lower our carbon footprint? Adjust your energy use to fit your energy needs. Upgrade items in your buildings or homes to ensure you're running efficiently. Products such as TVs, stoves, stereos, built 
today are much more efficient than the products of even 10 years ago. So people should also consider upgrading things like their furnace or boiler and air conditioning units, as well as simple structure upgrades like weather stripping for doors and plastic over your windows. Lightning is also a main source of energy consumption, so it is important to have LED bulbs that are far that use far less energy. Buildings that are considered to be used for industrial purposes can also upgrade machinery that lower pollutants, not only air pollutants, but other pollutants into the ecosystems. Here at UW Waukesha, we have done our part to become more energy efficient and lower our consumption, which will ultimately lower our emissions. The industrial energy upgrade was done by Honeywell, but it has many stakeholders. These include many people from the school, such as administration and maintenance staff, as well as the students. There was involvement from the county officials, as well as state leaders from the facility division. All these people were involved to make sure our campus is running at an efficiency uh, consumption level. Honeywell did the investment grade energy audit, and they have a guarantee of savings from installing the new products throughout the campus. I have met with Aly Alyssa Niesel, and she explained to me the process of installing everything, and as well as how the savings work, and if we do not meet our marks for our cost, they do a return check to the school for the difference of their guarantee. You can see here, some of our upgrades included new boilers, which the old ones were 47 years old. Included with that installation was the variable speed drives, which control the flow of hot water and fan speeds that control the climate zones for heating and cooling. Not only uh, does this increase savings in energy or decrease energy use, it helps to keep the school more moderate temperature. There used to be a lot of hot zones and cool zones, so with these variable speed drives, it keeps it more even throughout the building. We also replaced lights inside and out, which were around 17 years old, so they did not get the full use of the existing lights, but lights are the biggest energy saver. We also did plumbing upgrades that included low flow faucets in the bathrooms, as well as time faucets such as when you turn on the faucet, it runs for 10 seconds to prevent people from leaving them on all day. And aerators in the faucets help lower consumption. Another thing that helps, um, is really saves a lot of energy, is the sensors that control the lighting. When you walk into a room and the light goes on, it is um, done so it senses movement and turns off the lights when there is no movement in the room. These help control the usage a lot. There are also programs that help control usage time for heating and cooling for peak hours of operation. Another improvement was PC management, which turns off PCs when they're not in use. I've met with John Bowles, who is the leader of maintenance here at UW Walkshaw on the campus, and we went around and looked at all the new products. You can see in the right-hand corner on the, on the lower is the new boilers. Most people think that there would be a boiler per building, but these are all located in one building in the fuel house. And the pumps pump them throughout all the other buildings. And the, the computer programs and the various speed drives monitor the flow and basically prevent, it, it lets it uh, run at a certain rate instead of running full speed all the time. The chiller and cooling tower also use the same principles of the variable speed and able to cut back on energy usage so it's not running all day and all night. So, how much did these upgrades cost altogether? The total was $3,892,700 for the total for the Honeywell upgrade. This came from state, the state, the county, and some incentives from Focus on Energy, which we will talk more about later. As you can see, $2,000,000 Roughly 50,000 came from the Division of Facilities Development, and that is part of the state that goes around and upgrades state buildings. 1.75 million came from the county. From, from these upgrades, you can see the projected savings. In the field house alone, we project to save $37,584 annually. 
In the Northview and Library buildings, we, pro we project to save $3,734 annually. Southview Theater, we are projected to save $15,091 annually. And from the Commons and Westview administration area, we will be approximately saving $35,512. And that is a total of 125,320 projected annual savings. So, we have the return on investment per item. And there was many more upgrades done. I just grabbed a few that most people can relate to. The boiler, obviously, we just don't pitch off, has a 23-year re return on investment. The interior lights are 13 and a half years, and the exterior lights are 15.7 years. However, these required additional costs for the fixtures, and if you were to just replace bulbs, you will find that replacing just lights to new, up, to new upgraded energy efficient bulbs will have a return of investment of less than two years. The air chiller and cooling tower was the highest um, return investment year-wise with 114 years, but that is something that was original to the building for 47 years old and needed to be replaced as part of the system upgrade. The plumbing system improvements have a 14-year return on investment. Besides the financial benefits, we will be saving, these are monthly approximates, the greenhouse gases we, re, we will be reducing by 217 cubic tons each month. That is equivalent to 216 more cars on the road, or six railroad cars full of coal burned, or the equivalent of 926 acres of pine trees. But the financial bottom line here at UW Waukesha from the third quarter report is we are on schedule to be saving $137,000 this year. That will be a total of 28 year return on investment as it is. The projection was for a 31 year total return on investment. So you may be wondering how can you apply this to your everyday life and how can you help save on emissions and save energy costs. Well, the first thing I would do would change your lights in your home to more efficient LED lights. These are very easy to install and can be purchased at any store. Use less water by installing low flow items, such as shower hats and faucets through your house and aerators. Timers or sensors for outdoor lighting can also help cut back significantly on energy usage. Instead of leaving your lights on all night long, they merely go off when somebody approaches the door or the designated sensing area. If you'd really like to make an investment and make a difference, you can invest in a high efficiency furnace and air conditioning. People may think that they don't have the money to invest in these new items. Well, there are many government programs to help you with these items. I've met with Rose Views from um, the Milwaukee County Energy Alliance, and she discussed all these programs with me. ME2 makes it easy and affordable by combining state incentives along with low interest financing. Essentially, if you were to invest in a furnace for your home with their financing, the energy cost savings would be equivalent to the, the rate of the financing. So it, it would be almost matching the price. And then after the return of invest, investment, of 20 years, the furnace should outlive that return on investment, therefore making it uh, very helpful for incentives. Focus on energy helps you to understand how you're using energy and to use it smarter, and actually offers you free energy savings products, such as pictured here on the PowerPoint. If you go to their website, they will mail you new light bulbs and aerators and a shower head for free, just simply for signing up. They also are in control of all the incentive programs throughout the state. One program that I really like, it's called Refresh Milwaukee. And it's basically an envisioned sustainability plan to make Milwaukee a world-class eco-city. It provides the resources to make buildings more energy efficient, water consumption lowered, as well as lowered waste. In conclusion, each building will have a different result from, from upgrades. It is difficult to generalize 
each building. You can't categorize every building together. They all have to have their individual energy audit. There are many variables that cause these results, such as the size of the building, design of the building, what it's used for, the age of the building, and, and pre-existing items, such as the furnace and air conditioning units. Some upgrades have a better return on investment. Obviously, you've seen from the previous slide, the boiler has a much better return on investment than the air chiller. So you have to really think about how you want to spend your money and what makes the most sense for you if you're um, in a financial position. There are many low-cost upgrades that many people can do on their own, such as changing the lights and changing your shower heads. The final conclusion is lowering energy not only cuts down on emissions, but lowers costs associated with energy use. With all the resources provided through many programs offered by multiple levels of government, retrofitting buildings is very beneficial and should be done by all building owners. With that, I thank you and I will take any questions or comments. Mm -hmm.